Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkles on K. Welcome to my new and improved melee combat guide. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you how to train when you first start out melee in your level 1 and all your melee stats, all the way up to getting your level 99 and getting the best weapons in the game when it comes to melee. So first of all, before I do anything else, I would highly recommend you do Slayer for at least the majority of your melee training. You don't have to start out with Slayer, however, Slayer is really the best way to train. I am going to include a lot of methods in this guide where you can train without Slayer, but before we actually get into those methods, I do have to strongly urge you to at least consider doing Slayer, and if you click on the Slayer icon on the screen right now, it will bring you to a Slayer guide that can give you some extra information, and I also have a link to my Slayer guides playlist in the description, which I will be completing eventually, which will have a full guide for every Slayer task that Curridol assigns in the game. The next thing that you can do that will really help you out when you first start training melee is the waterfall quest. It doesn't have requirements so you can do it right as you start the game and it will get you all the way from 1 to 30 attack and 1 to 30 strength. You can do this at level 1 all melee stats or you can train up a little bit, train up your defense, get a bit of better armor and then do the quest. It's really your preference. However, you can do the waterfall quest as soon as you like and you will get those 1 to 30 attack and strength levels so you won't even have to do the first stage of melee training which can really save a lot of time in the long run. Here are all the tiers of your melee weapons, and armor has the same tier at least up until the barrows, so you're going to be wearing these, this kind of weapon and armor from at least level 1 to 70, and beyond that it deviates a little bit. But when you first start out, you have to work with bronze. I'd recommend just buying 2 H swords for at least up through mithril or so, because you don't unlock some of the better abilities until later levels. So at low levels, it doesn't really matter all that much whether you're going to be using a 2 H sword or dual wield, and you'll be killing stuff very quickly no matter what style you use. So if you want to just buy 2 H swords, make it a bit simpler for the first three level, first few levels. And also, you don't have to worry too much about armor for the first stage because you'll be fighting creatures that are extremely low level and won't hit on you so if you want to skip the bronze and iron armor and not even start buying armor until the steel that's completely fine as well and as you progress through the levels you'll get up through rune dragon barrows god wars is just the god swords and i would recommend buying the serodomen sword since it's the cheapest and has the same stats as the god sword although it has no special attack and then also at level 80 you unlock the chaotic weapons which you have the dungeoneer before but are very worth it and then of course at level 90 are the dragors however they didn't fit on this page but take my word for it at level 90 you can wield the dual wield dragger weapons and also the level 90 noxious scythe that is dropped from araxor so the very first part of your melee training is going to be trolls. You can kill these in Berthorp. What kind of trolls? It doesn't really matter. There are three kinds of trolls, and you will be able to kill them even at level 1 attack and strength very, very quickly. So you might have to wait for spawns because um, they do take a while to spawn after you've cleared out an entire room of them. So some things you can do to get around this is either go to the other rooms of trolls. They're all level 1, so even the magic melee or range ones, it doesn't really matter. You can hit all of them even if you're using melee, and certain ones aren't weak to melee just because they're such low of a level so even at level one stats it's not much of a big deal but this is pretty much the fastest way to train your melee at a low level so just go in and clear out the room of trolls again they only have 50 hp but they give 40 xp per kill so they're actually quite fast of a way to train at a low level um, and just go ham with your bronze 2h and then equip your iron 2h once you are leveled up to level 10 attack um, and then once you reach level 20 attack and level 20 strength and level 20 defense it's time to move on to the next area Level 20 to 40 attack is really a very tricky span of levels to find monsters to train on since there are not very many good options available to you. So really my best recommendation is during these levels train some Slayer tasks so you can train at the Turiel Slayer Master um, who's located in Berthorp. Or if those tasks are a little bit too newbie for you, you can go to Canifis and train at the Mazchina Slayer Master who will assign slightly higher levels training uh, methods. I'd highly recommend training this way, however, if you really don't want to train Slayer at whatever reason, uh, grab some food and armor since you will need it at level 20 defense and proceed into the Edgeville dungeon where you can kill some hill giants. Hill giants will drop some runes and limpwort roots, so if you're really poor and struggling for money and just need your very first bit of starting cash, you can pick up some of the drops here. They also pick up big bones as well, but I wouldn't really recommend worrying about those too much. Again, just follow the path that I went down here, um, and this is going to lead you to the hill giants. Just remember, the hill giants aren't weak to melee, so you might struggle a little bit with accuracy, although at this point you will have your steel 2H sword, which is going to be doing a lot better than the iron one did in terms of accuracy you will still be able to hit them at 20 attack but again this is not the best place to for training just remember there really are not very many good monsters to train at, at this span of levels it's probably best that you stick with slayer however after this uh, once you get up from level 20 to 40 attack a lot more options of training will open up for you 
So now that you're up to hopefully 40 attack and 40 strength and 40 defense as well, time to get yourself some adamant armor and an adamant 2h sword as well and move on to moss giants. Now moss giants will hit you a bit at this level so it's important that you're wearing that addy armor and bring a bit of food along with you as well. The best and easiest place to access the moss giants is in the wilderness and since you'll still be a very low level, um, getting to the chaos tunnels will not be a problem, no one will be able to attack you since uh, low levels don't tend to camp the portal and even if you do die or something in the wilderness, adamant armor is not very expensive. But this is the best place to get to him since there's a lot of ma moss giants packed into a quite small room and it's quite close to a bank in Edgeville. Um, they will be aggressive if you're a lower level so it might be best to hide behind one of the pillars so only one of them can attack you at the time and that'll preserve your food. But you won't be able to stay for the longest trips here since the moss giants will be able to hit you a bit. Um, so you'll have to go back and bank for more lobsters or whatever your food of choice is every once in a while but that should be fine. Um, moss giants are pretty decent XP and with your Addy 2H sword you're going to be hitting a lot harder than than with previous weapons and you should be able to kill them very fast as well. Now for an alternate method for moss giants, another way to train from level 40 to 60 melee stats is Ankus in the Stronghold of Security. Uh, their drops are not very good, their XP is a bit faster, and they are also a little more annoying to get to and a little more annoying to bank than the moss giants, so it's really your preference which of these two you enjoy more. However, you'll be getting about 60,000 attack XP per hour here with an Addy or Rune 2 H sword since you'll be upgrading to a Rune once you get 50 attack. This is the best place to go to them. There's a room full of entirely just Ankus. Um, however, since the monsters in this dungeon are non-aggressive, you can really go into any room you want uh, that has a fair amount of Ankus in it and train there. I would just recommend this one. Another bad part about Ankus is they have quite a low spawn rate, and since they have low HP as well, you'll be clearing out the room kind of fast. So you might want to find a high spawn rate world, such as World 2 or something like that, so you're not having to stick around waiting for spawns, since that is a loss of XP. But anyway, just kill them as fast as possible, and as you can see they give a pretty decent amount of XP per kill, especially considering their hit points are so low, and it wouldn't take that long to get up to 60 attack training here. So now that you're 60 attack, it's time to upgrade to a Dragon 2H and also probably get yourself some decent armor as well. Rune armor is fine at this point, but it's going to be nice to upgrade to better armor as soon as you level up yourself to around 70 defense or so and you'll have bearer's armor and will be much better protected. So my personal favorite way of training between level 60 and 80 attack since we are going for chaotic weapons at this point is going to be mighty banshees. However this does require a quest. It requires the smoking kills quest which is done in the town of Paldovnich and also an easy way to get to Paldovnich. If you are planning on training here I'd recommend putting your house in Paldovnich uh, which is very very close to the smoky well dungeon. Also you'll need to equip either masked earmuffs or a slayer helm to be down here since the banshees will yell at you and drain your stats if you don't have earmuffs equipped yet you also need the face mask because otherwise the well itself will damage you and drain your stats but mighty banshees even though they're not weak to melee go down very quickly even to low accuracy weapons and they are very very fast xp giving a ton of xp per kill without incredibly high HP. If Mighty Banshees aren't cutting it for you, another way to train is going to be in the Living Rock Caverns. Admittedly, this is a much easier place to get to because you can just teleport quickly here with the Falador Lodestone and then run a bit to the northeast and then just climb down the ladder to the Living Rock Caverns. Very, very easy to access. Also, if you have level 73 mining, you can mine the Living Rock Corpses for living minerals and it'll give a good amount of living minerals per kill and they're worth like 200 to 300 each depending on GE prices. So this can be about 1 to 1.5 mil profit per hour as well on top of being pretty good combat XP. However, just be aware if you do decide to mine the corpses, it will cut down on your combat XP quite a bit. However, one thing that you can see is Living Rock creatures are much higher levels, so their defense can pose problems, especially if you're just using a Dragon 2H. But once you upgrade your weapons, you should hit on them just fine. But anyway, this is a decent place to train as well. Um, however, I would still recommend sticking with Maddie Banshees just because they have uh, much lower defense, so you're going to hit on them much easier and your accuracy won't be a problem. The final good place that I have to train between 60 and 80 attack is going to be Fire Giants. And again, these are in the wilderness, but you shouldn't have any problems since you're still a fairly low level. So this is probably the easiest place to access fire giants. You can also alternatively kill them in places like the waterfall dungeon, but it's just a lot easier to bank at this location and also it's fairly uncrowded as well so it shouldn't be too hard to find a world 
Again, the previous two methods I showed of Mighty Banshees and Living Rock creatures are going to be better methods to train. However, if you have, you know, gotten bored of those two methods of training or you want to try out something different, or if those two just aren't cutting it for you for whatever other reasons, you can always try out Fire Giants as well. Uh, Fire Giants are pretty good gold charms, and the other two methods I showed aren't very good charms in any sort of regard. However, uh, Fire Giants don't have really the best drops, and uh, they don't have too much special about them at all, but it's just another method for training if you want to try it out. There is one final training method before we move on to the Chaotic Weapons style of training, where you'll be able to kill monsters much quicker, and you'll be able to fight higher level monsters as well with higher defense and this is going to be hellhounds so hellhounds are at the very end of taverly dungeon if you don't have 70 agility for the pipe or 80 agility for the floor you're going to have to run all the way around the dungeon and that's going to be a huge pain now the main thing that people love about hellhounds is their afk and if you have 70 stats which i would recommend for hellhounds you can equip full guthans armor which is going to heal you while you afk and the hellhounds and you'll still need a little bit of food at only 70 defense however for the most part guthans will heal most of it back and you can just chill out and relax since the hellhounds are aggressive the main bad thing about hellhounds though is they have no drops and they can also get extremely crowded so for both of those reasons hellhounds aren't really the best method of training however if you want to try to afk this is your best bet and really the way to go now that you have up to level 80 in all your melee stats and hopefully chaotic weapons at this point or at least some sort of god sword uh, it's time to check out frost dragons frost dragons of course require level 85 dungeoneering so if you don't have that just wait until the next section of the guide however if you do you can kill frost dragons for not only some very very good combat xp but also a very large amount of money as well i do have a frost dragons guide and the link to that will just be on the screen if you're interested in this but you can earn up to four mil an hour even with just chaotic weapons um you will need some magic note paper or a yak if you have that yet in most cases i imagine people will need to bring magic note paper to the frost dragons so you'll need to stock up on that but overall you will be making a huge profit as the frost dragon bones are quite expensive and you can stay here for a long amount of time even if you don't have soul split and the guide that i'm showing is showing uh, what to do without soul split and without super anti-fires so you don't need um, high non-melee stats to be able to kill these things and make a good amount of money um, frost dragons again you do need 85 dungeoneering to get them so if you have 85 dungeoneering you should have a chaotic and you'll be able to kill them quite fast but since frost dragons are such good xp and also such good money as well it can be quite difficult to find a world at peak times so just be aware of that the next monster that's really good to drain on in these particular stats is abbey demons they do have a fairly high requirement in level 85 slayer but don't worry i do have a monster to show next which does not have a high requirement to kill that you can choose to train on or you can also choose to train on some of the previous stage the level 60 to 80 monsters as well because they're still going to be good xp so the place I'd recommend to go is in the Slayer Tower, and you want to kill Abyssal Demons there on the top floor. Uh, you also want to pick yourself up a contract at the start of the Slayer Tower, and you can pick up a contract for 200 Abbey Demons, and you'll get a little bit of bonus Slayer XP for doing so, and then you'll be able to turn in the contract for a nice chunk of cash at the end once you actually complete it. So Abbey Demons are, of course, very, very good melee XP. It is the high Slayer requirement to kill them, but if you were training Slayer to train your melee stats, then you'll have this Slayer level around these melee stats anyway so you wouldn't even have to worry about it and you would have killed two birds with one stone so last but not least a monster that is very good for training melee stats with good charms decent money and also uh, doesn't you know, have any additional requirements such as dungeoneer or slayer to kill is water fiends so i believe water fiends are in my magic my range and my melee training guys and that's because these monsters are just so good you can hit these fairly well even with just chaotic weapons you don't have to have dragors to train here um just make sure that you're bringing along some potions to boost up your attack to make your accuracy a little better if you don't have chaotic weapons you can still train here with a god sword but your accuracy might suffer a little bit so just be aware of that another thing that's um, not so great about water fiends is it can be quite difficult to find a world since everyone knows that they're very very good xp but you can try killing them and in the chaos tunnels as well if it's just getting too crowded um, in the ancient cavern and that's a good place to kill them as well um, it's not too hard to access and there's very rarely other people in the chaos tunnel to worry about but water fiends one of the best way ways to train you also get lots and lots of crimson charms to get yourself up to a pack yak as well so now we get into the level 90 to 99 training methods i would not really recommend killing any of these monsters unless you have the dragger weapons so if you don't have the dragger weapons a really good way to get them is by killing frost dragons to train up your melee stats and in the process you'll make plenty of money to end up 
being able to afford to buy those drag warp, dragger weapons for yourself. So that's a really great way to both train your melee and also um, get your stats up as well to be able to equip them. So Dark Beast is the first good way of training. Of course, you will need level 90 Slayer to kill these, but it's well worth it if you do have level 90 Slayer as these have an absolutely insane XP rate. The only place that you can kill them off of task is in the Mourner Tunnels, so you will have to at least start it, Mornings End Part 2 to access these. And also I'd recommend at least completing the Within the Light quest to be able to teleport here, or to have a Mask of Gloom, which is a fairly common um, reward off the Squeal of Fortune or the Treasure Hunter, and a lot of people have that. So if you do have that, that's a really easy way to teleport here. Or again, you could teleport here with the Teleport Crystal from the Within the Light quest. But anyway, Dark Beast, very, very good XP, and these are always a great thing to get as a Slayer task as well. So the next monster here is yet another Slayer monster, and you do need level 92 Slayer to kill Eretz. I don't have a bias for Slayer creatures, but truth be told, most of the best ways to train your melee stats are through Slayer, through these Dark Beast and Eretz tasks and such. Eretz aren't quite as fast XP as Dark Beast, but the best thing about them is they are very, very good money because they drop Eret Bones, which are worth between 8 to 10k every single kill, and they also have a very high drop rate for a lot of rune items and stuff which can be worth like 20 to 40k or so um with their rune plate legs and rune drops and all sorts of good stuff that they drop so the money here is quite good you can spend around three mil an hour or so killing erids um, but you will need drygors to kill them effectively since they do have very very high defense one thing to keep in mind though if you are using melee here is you always want to attack the dragors that are on all fours because even though it says that drag or erids have no weakness they do when they're in all fours they're in their ranged state and they are going to be weaker to melee than the ones that are standing upright because the ones that are standing upright and are in their melee state and they're going to be weaker to mage than to range but as you can camp these for quite a while um very very good melee xp and a great slayer task as well as you get them just like dark bees and the best thing about them is not only the great XP, but the money as well. Another pretty good way of training your melee stats is a, an extremely high requirement method, which is killing automatons. The reason why these are such a high requirement method isn't because they are difficult to kill, but is more because they require so many quests to kill them. Not only do they require the World Wakes and the ROTM quest to actually kill automatons, there's a whole string of other quests that you need to complete as well to unlock the full rewards of World Wakes, and you need all of them to unlock automatons. However, once you do have them unlocked, they're about 3 to 3.5 mil an hour. Uh, not the best melee XP, so these are more an alternative for people that might be really into quests, but not as much into Slayer. Similar to Eretz in the fact that they can do a good amount of damage to you, but are also are pretty good money, but they're not quite as good XP as Eretz, and they're also worse charms than Eretz. So, if you do have 92 Slayer, I'd recommend just to go for Eretz, personally. Also, if you want to check out a full guide to automatons, that's going to be on the screen as well, where I'll go much more in-depth on exactly how to kill them. They are a great Slayer task and very good Slayer XP, but their melee XP is a little lacking just because they don't drop, they don't give enough XP drops for the amount of HP that they have and how long they take to kill, but it's still pretty good and you can get some nice nearly 20 mil worth of gloves drops. The final thing that is worth mentioning for melee training isn't necessarily the best XP per hour, but is very, very accessible to everyone and also quite good money. Um, and this is doing God Wars dungeon bosses. So I will have guides to the Bandos, Zamorak, and Ceridoman bosses all up on the screen. All of these bosses are between 200 and 250k attack XP per hour, as long as you're using the quick hopping method, um, or just if you're on a high spawn world, you should be able to get very good XP rates as well. And if you get lucky, you can make quite good money there. Of course, the luck factor has to be there in order for you to make absolute bank. However, even if you don't make the best bank, they still are quite decent XP. It's going to be faster training to train with other methods. However, if you do decide to train here, um, you can get some drops. So that's about all for this guide. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it helped out a little bit. Um, leave a like. And also, if you want to check out some more guides, I'll have a link to my guides playlist on the screen. And I have a guide for every single skill in the game. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. And farewell.